Hey Wizards, welcome back. I got a video for you today that I'm really, really excited to show you that's been in the works for quite a long time now. I actually just finished packing my bags and I'm headed to the airport to meet Jason over in Carbondale because we're gonna be doing a behind the scenes of the helmets and the optics over at the Gentex facility. That's Gentex, Gentex Ops Corps in Carbondale, Pennsylvania, not like the car dealership in, in Michigan. I don't know why, but a bunch of people seem to be getting those two places confused, but I'll put a fancy transition here as I get all my stuff together and travel with Jason over to the facility. Come on, you got it. Yeah, so this is gonna be kind of cool. Walsh is gonna be taking the tour. I'm gonna be kind of your guys' eyes, so uh, I'll be the camera guy this time, and Walsh could joining all the fun. Yay! I just want you to know also, we're gonna try and show you as much as we can in the process. Just know there's obviously some secret sauce that goes into the helmet creation that we can't share with you. So if there's something we've omitted, just know it was it, probably on purpose. All right though, you ready to get started? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, come on guys, let's get to it. All right, everybody, we're in here at Gentex. We made our way in. We got Jason here manning the camera, and I got Matt here with me. Uh, first off, I want to say just a huge thanks to all the people from, from yourself and from the Gentex Corporation and all the people who made this happen. It's, it's a big ordeal that we finally put this together, so just a big thanks to you for letting us come out here. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Now, could you share a little bit about, about who you are, Matt? Share that with, the, with everybody, all the viewers, and tell a little bit about what all of this is. This is just absolutely crazy, and I want everyone to see this. Yeah, so I'm a ballistic design engineer taking ballistic helmet designs from initial concept development all the way through low rate initial production. We have myself and a team of engineers who do the same thing as well. All right, so what's what's all of this? So all of this is the history of Gentex. It all started off in 1894 when we were a silk mill. Fun fact, we were originally called General Textiles and the name kind of combined together to become Gentex. So as we went through the silk mill, we used that silk to create parachutes. Those parachutes were then stored or shipped in containers made out of composite material. The Navy came along and wanted that composite material that we made that container manufactured into a helmet shell, a hard shell. And that's kind of how the composite shell designs here at Gentex started. As we go throughout the years, the first ballistic helmet was manufactured in the 1980s and then we became more integrated and modular, adding communication systems and hearing protection, respiratory protection, and high-performance optics. Our expertise in systems integration comes from our experience in aircrew headborne systems. That has led us into the same integration on ground headborne systems, as well as power and data integration on the rail link. Matt, it's so interesting to see the timeline of things, as all I really know is Ops Core and Gentex as this helmet company, but then you see the history of it all to realize you know, they really came as a textile company that made parachutes. And it's just crazy to see this transformation that's led into what we see now and what all of our soldiers use. So interested to learn more, where are we headed to today? We are going over to Optics. All right, everyone, we just got to hear all about the history of this building and all the craziness that they've done in the past. And now we're with Kevin here on the Optics side. So Kevin, tell me a little about yourself, what you do here and, and what we're gonna look at today. I am uh, Kevin Granville. I'm the operations manager here for our tactical optics department. Uh, so today we're going to talk a little bit about how these optics lenses are made and a little bit about the technology that goes into them. So what is the first step in, in creating something like this? The first step for the manufacturing process is extrusion, where we actually take the clear material and turn it into a performance material to do whatever we need this end product to do. All right, let's go show everybody. So this is the first step in our manufacturing process where we extrude performance materials. Now, everything that we make starts out with simple, clear plastic pellets like this, but Gentex um, has been uh, using dye technology to enhance the plastic materials since the 1980s. So what we're doing in this room here is we're taking those clear plastic pellets, we're mixing them with performance dyes that do uh, various different types of light management, everything from sunshades, to advanced laser protection. So we take these materials and we mix them in a custom mixing process in this room over here that we can't see today, but, um, and then we take them and we're melting those materials down in this extruder here. This machine is taking those coated pellets, melting them down into strands. We run them through a water bath here and then re-chop them into pellets. Now, before we can uh, mold this 
material has to go through a series of cleaning steps. So we're running them through a fine separator, and this is a de-dusting unit that actually cleans the material prior to it. Okay, so now we have our final material. We're at the next step of the process, which is injection molding. So we're taking that material, we're drying it out here in these industrial dryers. It takes all the moisture out of it, drops the material onto a rotating screw and melts it down. And we're forcing it into different types of tools under pressure to make whatever kind of lens shape that we need. This particular one is a large visor that we make for air crew helmets, made into a visor blank like this. This process just produces a molded piece of polycarbonate that needs further treatments before we can make it into a final product. So Kevin, you mentioned that this blank is for air crew visors. Now, what if we were to do like you know, the, the helmet step and visors and stuff, is it the same blank or do you use something different? Different blank, different tooling, but same process. Right? So we, we injection mold pretty much the same way, um, but we have a whole portfolio of different tools to make different shapes, geometries, and thicknesses, depending on the product type that it goes So the blank is then different, but then the, but the rest of the process is all the same. Right. So uh, built-in quality is a big part of our uh, process here at Gentech. So, Everything that we make, everything that we mold um, gets checked for optical performance up front. We do what we call a first piece. Um, so all these different products that we make have calibrated templates like this where we mark the locations where we're doing checks and they all have um, a first piece sheet such as this one that tells the technicians what to check, where to check it, and what the different ranges are that are allowed in each one of them. So these sheets like this are checking optical uh, deviations. We have a bench set up here to set up to do ANZ um, optical testing. So we're shooting a, a laser beam down here at the range 32 feet away. You can see the red dot on the target. Um, and when we're putting a lens in front of it, we can measure the prismatic power of the lens because the laser beam would start to deviate off of the target. These devices here, we have different fixtures like this one here for checking all the different products. This here is for our, our ground uh, MK1 glasses. And these are uh, optically corrected lenses, meaning they're wet. So the goal of this test is to say, you know, when we have no lens in here, you can see that this is a very clear picture, right? So when we put a lens in front of it, um, if our lens is molded well, which of course it is, we can still very clearly see the white spaces between the black lines. Um, all these fixtures are designed to hold the lens in the right tilt and orientation that they would be as you're wearing the glasses on your face. So. This test is designed just to kind of see as the user would see as they're wearing our product. We have a Gardner Impact device here, so we're taking lenses and uh, a molded lens that has stress in it would fail this test. So we take a lens and pop it in this device. We smash it, and if the lens comes out with a bubble but no breakage, we molded it correctly. There seems a lot of emphasis on QA and, and testing at this. Is this the only stage that you do QA or is this done kind of throughout the entire process? Throughout the entire process. So this is the kind of the molding QA step, right? The next step is we coat the lens, some kind of protective coating. Then we have a QC test lab right out the back of the curing ovens okay. to test coating adhesion, coating abrasion. From so there, you know, we're only going to cut it to shape and attach some sort of hardware. And then there's another step where we have to do final product testing. This is just one small QC test of the molding, basically, then. Like, there's tons more that still happens along the process, yes. Now that we have our molded blanks, the next step of the process is to put an anti-scratch protective coating over them. So polycarbonate is very soft in general by nature. So we use this automated machine here to do a series of cleaning steps, like a high temperature soap wash. After this goes through a series of all these different cleaning steps, this machine has a drying section to take all the moisture out where we apply the coating. So this section here is really just drying up the parts. And then when we get to this section here, we're applying a Gentex anti-scratch coating that helps protect the lens from scratches and also makes it more durable in general for impact protection. After the coating's applied to the lens, this section of the machine is a pre-cure oven that actually sets the coating up so it's not sticky when it comes out the other end. It doesn't collect dust or debris. So this whole section is just drying the product. And at the back end of the machine, load the product on these carts, and they go into a final cure in one of these big batch ovens. All right, Kevin, so you, you mentioned that in, you know, the last machine we saw, that's where they add in the hard coating. But I know there's some other features that you can add into some different types of helmets with like step and visors and, and other things that we deal with on the helmet side. How would you add in 
the anti-fog coating to something like that when you've already done the hard coating on it. So uh, this machine is only doing anti-scratch or hard coating. Um, there are a lot of products, especially in the ground side, that require an, an anti-scratch on the front and an anti-fog on the back. Because when products are close to your face or an enclosed goggle type system, the heat from your face, especially in a colder environment, would cause the goggle to fog up. So we'll take you there right now. I'll show you how we can do that. All right, for those products uh, that do require two different coatings on each side of the lens, like a hard coat on the front and an anti-fog on the back, uh, this clean room here is our flow coating cell where we're doing just that. So um, operators in here are trained to hand apply the coating to each surface and in between each step they go through a heated tunnel where they get half set up and they can flow coat the front surface and then go into a final cure just like our dip coated product. So this gives us the capability to add those custom coatings on either side of the lens. We also have an extension on the clean room down here for doing enhancement coatings such as anti-reflection coatings or uh, multi-layer dielectric filters. Okay, so this is the QC test lab that tests all of the coated products after they come out of these big batch ovens over here. So now that we've molded it, we've applied the uh, protective coatings, all that's gonna happen to these blanks from here is they pull their random samplings from each cart that comes out of the oven. They stamp off on it that it's accepted and they go to the next step, which is an inspection. Uh, where inspectors, trained inspectors are looking at every single lens 100% for any kind of minute cosmetic flaws that may have come in through the processes. All right, next step is these blanks are going to go into some kind of a trimming process. So we use a high speed MEI trimmer to trim most of the ground products because it's fast, efficient, and accurate. And then they're trimming these to a final shape. We have a series of assembly cells to put the final products together. And then the final products also get a sampling that goes up to the lab for each lot. It'll get a lot level test to make sure that the end product is good, even with frames and rivets, straps, whatever kind of components go on to that part. So you've seen the process. Now, um, you know, here's some of our OpsCore iPro line, which ranges from everything from riot visors to our step and visor, to ballistic spectacles for all the different types of needs. Because we make the materials in-house, we're able to custom design different um, performance lenses for different types of needs, like our yellow contrast enhancing lens for low light conditions or our dazzle laser protection lens. We can customize the plastic to any different needs and put them in any of the different lens configurations because we have full control of the quality and the materials in-house. Kevin, I think the most impressive thing is how you talked about all the optics go through all the same process, but they end up in so many different types of products from riot shields to step and visors and, and even the Mark 1s. But now, you know, we've come all this way and we're all the way here. I don't think anybody's around. What, what secret sauce do you have that you can't tell us about? Well, we weren't supposed to talk about this. Anybody looking? No. Uh, so I'm not talking too much about this because this is gonna be launching very soon. So you'll, you'll hear a lot more about it, but this is our Ballistic Eye Pro, the Opscore Mark II be uh, coming to stores near you in the, in the near future. So that'll be Keep exciting to see. for that. That's awesome. So look forward to that. Look forward to seeing more of the reviews from us too, checking it out. I, I definitely want to check them out. So I'm gonna take a moment with those. But I do also want to say a big thanks to you and to the entire Gentex team for having us come out here, getting to see this whole facility, go through all the optics lineup and see some of the new stuff you guys have coming out. I really look forward to seeing you guys some more at SHOT Show and showing us more products. And it was just a fantastic time. So thanks for having us out here. All right, great to meet. All right. So I want to say big thanks to all of you guys for joining us and coming out to Opscore with us, going through the whole tour and learning more about the optics and everything. We're going to go head home soon and actually make our way back to Nebraska and Washington. But I do want to take a moment and say a really huge thanks to all the people who made this happen. Um, Allie and Courtney, they were just instrumental, all the Opscore leadership in, in letting us come out here and make this fun video for you guys and showing you how all this stuff's put together. And so thanks out of the way, we kind of want to say some things that kind of surprised us coming on this. I thought it was so interesting. You know, the piece that resonated the most with me was really the bones of Gentex. Both of us were talking how, I think before this, we thought of Gentex as kind of this big cog, this big machine, this big yeah. corporation. And you come here and you see like these, what, 100 year old floors. We'll see if we can roll some B-reel about yeah. it. Like these old floors just to show these bones about where this whole company came from. And you think of like big old Gentex and it's really general textile mills. You learn the whole history of it all. It just a, has a lot more humanity to it yeah. than I really imagined was like, oh, just another corporation. I, I was probably the most surprised by that. Even knowing so much about their products, I was surprised by how much I didn't know. Yeah, I think there was a lot of things too where 
kind of going down that same vein of, it seemed like a family. Like, it was kind of funny. We ran into uh, Denise who did the black light testing and she's been here for 36 years. Like, super happy to be here. Um, I could tell that. I could tell a lot of the folks that we talked to today that they just enjoyed their time here. But overall though, I hope you guys really enjoyed this. I had a great time having Jason Knight with me. We're hopefully gonna bring you another video soon on the helmet side of things. Yeah. So stay tuned for that. But I wanna say a big thanks to all of our Patreon supporters and all of our YouTube members. You guys make it possible we can do crazy things like this. Coming out, doing a tour of the whole Gentex facility. That's thanks to all of you. And I wanna say thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Comment down below, what's your most interesting thing was you learned from this tour? I wanna hear about it. All right, everybody. Walsh and Jason out.